that would be great for people then. All right. Um, Hello, Arter. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let's pretend we haven't talked for 10 minutes already. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I opened this casually thing. And what I see is 500 uh, different effects, right? Side effects. Yeah. And uh, actually, if you open up the chloroquine one, I think that's a little bit more useful. Hmm. Hold on. And that is because? Uh, because there are uh, several tabs. And hmm. let me just go ahead and pull it open real quick so I can look at it alongside you. And can you uh, give uh, like a quick summary, like three sentences about this causally thing? I've never seen it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, causally, uh, I just discovered this because I went to, uh, um, was it GHDDI? Let me go and grab that, that link. Uh, this is a really useful website for people who are trying to, so this is uh, it's called the Global Health Drug Discovery Institute. And they are organizing a whole lot of, um, I mean, they, they obviously they're in China, so they're based in China. So they've been dealing with this for several months now, right? And um, so they're like way ahead of the game in terms of organizing a scientific response. And, um, and the Global Health Drug Discovery Institute in particular has been, you know, they've got all the databases and the, and the uh, experimental methods and the and in this uh and and you know the data mining and all that kind of stuff and and so uh one of the actually let me go ahead and um i'm just share gonna go screen? ahead up what was that share your screen or yeah actually yeah i guess i can share my screen that might that makes the most sense so this is the so i was just um can you see it? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can see my, my screen targeting COVID-19? Yep. Okay, great. So um, it's a public information sharing portal and I was it's, uh, you know, poking around on it and uh, they, they were looking for people who could collaborate. I talked with uh, the person who was organizing it and she pointed me to, uh, oh gosh, it's, everything's moved around now. She basically, uh, Causally had just contributed like 1,200 causal assertions about coronavirus and drugs that can affect, that can treat it. And uh, I am developing a uh, call, uh, basically I'm working on a project to uh, apply causal reasoning to viral pathogenesis. And you know, when the whole COVID-19 thing blew up, I was like, wow, uh, I need to assemble the causal model of everything that's known about coronavirus like now, stat, right? Yeah. So uh, causally, enables that kind of, uh, you know, kind of widespread thing. So basically the cord nine, they, they're basically taking the same data set as the cord 19, um, and extracting causal assertions from that, um, from that data set. And each causal assertion basically is some subject upregulates or downregulates some, pre, uh, some object, right? Okay. And they use the UMLS, <laughs> they use you know, all kinds of, uh, of ontologies, to be able to, uh, and then they map, and then they take these causal assertions and they're supported by literature citations and they actually have the quotation in the, um, uh, let me go ahead and just show you rather than kind of describe it. So here we go, we have chloroquine upregulates apoptosis, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so this is this shows you, here we go. So here's a real, uh, here's a, can you see this? I mean, maybe I can yep, make it a little bit I larger. Can. There we go. So apoptosis. So this is, this is a literature citation and this is the number of relationships that we're able to extract per article, right? So and this is coming from Cord 19, right? Unmodified. It's, it's coming from the same data set as Cord 19. They had a, a actually, mm. uh, they've been getting it straight from PubMed. Uh, okay. They don't, they don't do uh, bio archive or med archive uh, because they want it peer reviewed. Okay. But they, they they just updated their data set like a, a week ago, and so okay. it's it's pretty recent, right? Uh, you know, but they've already got their whole pipeline. They've been working for, on this for about two years now, so they've already got their whole uh, NLP pipeline. They're using BERT and all that kind of stuff to mm -hmm. you know, pre-train models and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so this is like a so the point is that 
is that uh, these kinds of um, of, of causal relationships, statements. Yeah. What was that? Relationships, relationships, basically. Right? right, but they're not. They're not associations. They're actually, uh, you know, it's saying the a causes, Actions. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a, you know, saying if you you would expect that if you uh, uh, increase chlor uh, chloroquine, that would increase apoptosis, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so then they have the uh, the quotation that they use to extract that causal relationship. Okay. And. And then uh, they can also aggregate them so that you have, here we go, here's an example. Um, so this is with the no aggregation, but they also aggregate it as well. Um, so and those cause and fact relationships are, actions are only related to the um, specific medical um, like quantified properties, right? That's right. That's right. And they use the literature citations to uh, provide evidence that that particular node in the ontology has the correct relationship to the, 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 the object, right? And does it uh, take into account any of the like risk factors? So another, uh, so you're talking about risk factors like side effects, right? Yeah. Let me just go ahead and point you, show you what, how, how this works. So you can go causes of uh, what, chlor uh, hydroxychloroquine, right? Mm -hmm. Hydroxychloroquine. And he goes, oh, I know what that is. Uh, but not causes of, we want side effects of. Nice. And so then it just, just generates this, you know, this guy for you, and uh, but you can even go further, right? You can say, um, so this is like specifically side effects, and so you know, the the actual um, if I were to do more of an advanced search, I could say hydroxychloroquine, chloro, chloroquine. And uh, so apply that, uh, and then we want to just say upregulates disorders, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know, heterogeneous disorder maybe? Weird. Oh, so no. Uh, this is the place where you would expect those things that uh, Hillary was talking about, right? The cytokine storm and other adverse effects. Adverse effects, that's what I was looking for. Here you go, I'm a, a medical expert now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, adverse effects, that's it. Adverse reaction to drug. And search. All right, so these are the kinds of things that it can, uh, uh, it, so what did I say over here? Oh, uh, so this is oh, med.consulate, so I need to go to med.consulate and I get all this kind of stuff. Um, and notice they've already got some pre-populated uh, um, uh, queries that are relevant to coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're basically like anybody who wants to use this can can just do it, and so and these are all the kinds. What was that? Uh, go ahead. I was going to say uh, these are all the kinds of target concepts. So this this kind of all kinds of uh, adverse reactions, right? Mm -hmm. So I can click on any of these, and then it shows you all the evidence that supports that from the actual literature. And those are. 2015. Okay, so I assume it it is generalized to other viral diseases, MERS, SARS, and other stuff. Oh, we have we haven't done the SARS, SARS. We're just talking about hydroxychloroquine, right? Mm, okay. 
right now if you want to uh if you want to oh there it is umls disorder they did have that um so we want to have uh, adverse reaction to drug right so there's all kinds of uh, you know what are all the evidence for adverse reaction to drug here we go four relationships there okay um and they they integrate like a whole bunch of sources they got like drug central in there and all that kind of stuff now if you wanted to go to um like a coronavirus stuff right mm -hmm. so there's uh causes of coronavirus um so we have oh, chloroquine down regulates right mm -hmm. so here we go chloroquine down regulates SARS, MERS, and just in general coronavirus. So let's go take a look at that one. Uh, right, so remdesivir and chloroquine. So they've got like a 2020 article in here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in vitro, that's important. Context is everything, right? Mm -hmm. Not in humans, but in uh, in vitro. And where, like, how do you connect this to the previous? I'm still learning how to use causally. <laughs> I just like, I just got like, you know, like last week and uh, I was so excited because it, it looks great. Yeah, because it's exactly what I needed to be able to construct a causal model. And so I can just show you uh, what that is. So, um, just kind of give you a bigger picture of where I see causally fitting in. Um, here we go. Oh, not that one, but that one. Nope. There we go. So the idea is we take a COVID, you know, the cord 19, and what we want to extract from there is this kind of subject predicate object that also has, uh, you know, kind of context and as well as provenance, right? Mm -hmm. So these are known as nanopubs, and there's actually a, a, a format for uh, you know, there's like an open standard for re representing these uh, nanopods. And the idea is that if you want to, you know, combine knowledge from one paper with knowledge from another paper, you have to break them down to these little nanopods so that you can combine them into a causal model. And that's the idea here is that you have these subject object predicates, then you can form a causal model from that. And the idea is to apply multiomics measurements to that causal model. So that in, in particular, multiomics measurements of host response to viral infection. So we can see, you know, what is it that makes this more pathogenic or less pathogenic than SARS or MERS, right? Mm -hmm. How are they different? And, um, and once you have your model conditioned on that data, then you can perform, you know, calls or reasoning types of questions, you know, because once you have the data, then you, you can ask hindsight types of questions. Well, what if we had, now that we know that immune response is not activated uh, in this, you know, mm -hmm. due to this protein being, you know, this viral protein being present. What happens if we target that protein and inhibit it? Would we now see a, a viral response, an immune response? Because mm -hmm. we're trying to get our cells to, you know, activate their immune response as quickly as possible in response to a coronavirus infection. Okay. So, um, so that's the idea is I'm in developing this causal inference engine to enable the ability to ask questions of this causal model that has been conditioned on the, all these multiomics measurements and a causal model that's been generated from this bio NLP kind of invalidated uh, bio NLP um, causal assertions. Makes sense. I mean, this looks super cool. I, I'm far from understanding how it works in, in details, but from the high level, it looks amazing. So, 
yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's an idea. It's it's kind of I'm trying to make it real now. So okay. that's why I actually reached out to uh, to Corona Y because I was like, this is the kind of people who could help me make this real, right? So um, I assume like the best people that would actually help you are people in the task uh, vaccines and therapeutics yep. uh, channel. Yep. Uh, they're making some crazy progress in there, talking about adaptogenes and other things that I have no clue about. So m maybe sharing this video in there would be a, a good start for them sure. to understand the groundwork that you've done so far. Yep. Uh, that sounds like a, the best fit uh, within our organization, if you will. Uh, sure. 500 people that are crazy enough to to do things that you know just are insane. <laughs> but yeah, uh, in terms of my um, specific uh, task or exploration, uh, from what I saw in Causally, this is a great input in terms of the general um, adverse e effects that. Uh, hydroxychloroquine has yeah I think we can take that and if there is nothing of uh, some sort of uh, relationship between like general adverse effects and COVID-19 um, things we can we do that with causally or should yes, we yes this uh, is really cool uh, so you can have like these um, so let me go to uh, advanced yeah, uh, no, actually, is it multi-hop? Yeah. So I can say, I can have a relationship where A causes B, which causes C, or I can have one where B causes A and C, or I can have one where A and C cause B, okay. or I can have one that kind of goes backwards, right? You know, from A, I'm trying to infer B, which tries to infer C, right? So here we're kind of talking about A influences B and yep. C influences B, right? A influences B and, and this one, B influences C. That's right. So it's kind of transitive, right? Yeah, but in terms of the specific scenario of we have a, a coronavirus and similar yep. viral diseases. Yep. And like in my head, the causal re relationship would be the third one, the, the B being the adverse effect. A being the coronavirus and C being the drug. Ah, interesting. So because I that's what Hillary was talking about. This like one. The, I would have thought it would be this one because here in this case, the drug downregulates coronavirus but upregulates a disorder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess there are multiple ways to look in, into that. So that's actually one of the queries that I did. So I said uh, coronavirus. Uh, corona virus search sure genus coronavirus all right uh, apply that and then is uh, oh, so first of all I got the wrong one let's click on this guy right so uh, in this case the arrow is going the other direction we want that to be down we want to have a drug that actually treats it right Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and I, I can actually can say drug or pharmacological substance, pharmacological substance, starting to get more pharma, uh, nope, I didn't mean that, I meant No, really couldn't figure it out. Pharmacological. Maybe just drug. No. Oh, here we go. Pharmacological. Um, and then this last one is uh, disorder, right? Mm hmm. Drug effect disorder. There we go. And in this case, we want to increase the disorder, disorder right? So in this case, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're uh, inhibiting uh, coronavirus, but we're getting these ex additional disorders as well. Mm -hmm. So we go ahead and search for that. Uh, of course, this is not the right one. Uh, pharmacological. Oh.
still not quite uh, used to this yet. Um, I'm not sure trying to figure out. Because sometimes pharmacological substance is exactly what you want, and sometimes it's not. It's not clear what category. There we go. Mm. Okay. Clinical drug? It could be anything, right? Or let's just assume. What, what if you select everything? Just all chemicals and drugs? Yeah, well, I was going to say clinical drug, but yeah, I could just select everything. Why not? There you go. Apply. All right, let's go ahead and search that. Okay, here we go. Got a whole lot of drugs. Cocaine, look at that. Nice. <laughs> it does, it does uh, make a murine hepatitis virus go down. That is a coronavirus. Uh, so <laughs> who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Sodium, actually that's interesting. So um, salt has been shown to, if you, if you like take your N95 mask and you put salt on it hmm. then if a water droplet hits it then the salt actually like immediately uh freezes it so it can't get any further past you or past it so you know if you take your bandana and you dip it in salt water let it dry that's a much more effective than just having a bandana of course that's assuming that you're using the mask to protect yourself the, the purpose of a mask is to protect other people right yeah so interesting so okay so here could you export this? Could I what? Export. Export, yes. So let's just go ahead and take everything here and export it as a CSV. There we go. And put it up in the Slack. Would that work? Yep. And I would assume that there is uh, hydroxychloroquine in this list. I sure hope so. Uh, can you check? Uh, 38 hmm. of 38. Uh, it's I don't see it certainly was there when, here we go, pharmacologic substances are in there. That's surprising. Chlor, so a lot of things, so when I, so yeah, I'm not sure how this, uh, so not quite used to the, um, this interface yet. So no, it's not in there, which is a little surprising, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it would make sense to have it here based on, um, or maybe there is no, not enough data for well, let's, them. Let's take a look at this. Let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, what's the this is antifungal, right? Or... Okay. Uh, chlorop chloropromazine is probably responsible for some of the observed in vitro phytotoxic effects of this drug. Uh, the cation radical, I see. Um, you can click on it, or you can take, take a look at the relationships. So we really wanted to have, you just want to have uh, hydroxychloroquine. We can do that too, right? So rather than all that, we can do hydroxychloroquine. Search on that. Ah, that's why I couldn't do it. All right, so interesting. SARS coronavirus. Let's try coronavirus. Yeah, so that's interesting. Um, so it should have, right? Yeah. That's what I want. Nice promo wire supply. And we wanted, oh. Yeah, okay. Down. Oh, sweet. I don't know why that, yeah, it doesn't really work. What happens if you select all? If you do what? If you select all. Purple. All here? Yeah. Nothing. No, I think the problem is this guy over here. No, maybe it's just... So that's really weird because if I just do a regular search, right? Rapid search. And if I go side effects of... Hydroxychloroquine. I 
lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. 571. And I'm sure there is some information in Chord 19 that connects these uh, side effects to, um, to the drug. So it's either causally doesn't have that specific data or they're not processing the data set entirely, right? Yeah. What do you think? Um, well, I think that I'm not understanding how to use the, uh, the um, I think what's going on is I don't understand how to use the query, the, the advanced query interface yet because mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what I think. It, what, what we've just attempted to do is exactly what I w was trying to reach in terms yep. of the, the results. Yep. Uh, I think it is important to, to have those results. I'll try to submit a request for the account for this tool, play around with it. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe you'll have some time to, to figure it out. Yep. Um, yeah, if you can send me those files, uh, the general side effects, um, export that will be highly beneficial for me to start ideating if we can transform this into simple machine learning problem and try to um, uh, extract some insights based on our enriched Chord 19 data set because that would be interesting to to see what kind of results we can extrapolate from there and what else what else is good to have in terms of export I think but that's I good. Say, I think I did. I, I gave you this one already. Uh, so that's this one right. Um, hold on, let's, let's go. I think that's exactly what this one was. Oh, cool. You can actually even see it. Uh, this is the name of the file, of the file right? Uh, or this mm. is this is the actual query that was performed. So okay. I can just take that and just grab that. And so let's see if that's the same as this one. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So exactly the same. That's great. Okay. All right. So I think I have a direction to uh, dig in terms of like further steps to explore. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I don't ha really have any other questions to you for now, well, but if you... Oh, I was going to say, I, ha I have a question for you. So one thing that's really nice about this is that you have essentially right here a, uh, a corpus, mm -hmm. right? It's an annotated corpus that tells you not only what literature citation it is, but it, it gives you a subject, predicate, and object. They're, they're typed so that, uh, you know, chloroquine, all the, I guess these guys are all, uh, you know, actual concepts from like UMLS, right? Mm -hmm. So you have uh, a relationship between two UM, UMLS, uh, relationship type, you have evidence, you have the article that, so this, this evidence right here is the actual quotation where, from which it was extracted, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the article and you know, all the other information about that article. Uh, so one could use that as a training set to say, hey, if I were to try to extract causal relationships, here's what's true, here's what's false, right? You mean having the human expert go through this uh, data set and kind of validate it? We could validate it, but I was also just thinking if you were to take the Core 19 and try to train your, your uh, machine learning algorithms to extract causal relationships, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way that causally is done. Okay. And, and I actually have a manually curated data set uh, of about a, a two, million, uh, 2 million causal assertions that have also been extracted from the literature, but manually. And 2 million? 2 million. Oh, wow. Who, who've done this? Is, this is Biodati. And I can also get you an account on there. Uh, we, we, they stood up an instance for me called, uh, let me uh, go ahead and put in the Slack window. Uh, so many things open. There we go. 
So yeah, if, if you go to studio dot by covid covid nineteen dot iodati dot com, then uh, those are all manually uh, validated causal assertions with the same kind of nanopub kind of format, right? Nice. So um, now they're not all about coronavirus. That's what we have to populate, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, just in terms of training a data set, training an algorithm to be able to extract causal assertions, I couldn't think of a better data set to do that with. So what would be the, okay, so the inputs would be this expert from Causally and the expert from BioDaddy, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And the output would be, can you give me? Well, okay, so there's, there's two ways I'm thinking about input and output, right? So let's go back to my, uh, my little, uh, this guy, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have already causally, which I do, then I would just use it in the forward direction, right? I, I just want to say, I want to take all these causal assertions and assemble them into a causal model. Okay. But if I said, causally is great, but I think we could do better, mm -hmm. then I would say, let's take the BioDotty corpus or and causally corpus, whatever, um, and train a bio NLP algorithm to search the literature, extract out these causal assertions. And uh, when it gets it right, that's great. But when it, when it uh, misses a... Um, so there's th two possibilities, right? Uh, two ways you could get things wrong. It could extract a causal assertion that isn't there. Uh, and so it's, that is a false positive. Or it could miss a causal assertion that was in that quotation. Mm -hmm. And that would be a false negative. And both of those could be used to improve the bio NLP. For, uh, you know, it could be used to improve the, um, the bio NLP mm -hmm. uh, machine learning algorithm. And in terms of the these causal relationships, you're not just talking about drugs, right? You're talking about any kind of causal relationships. Exactly. Being risk factors or, you know, um, geography exactly. factors, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds... Policy, policy decisions, right? Yeah. It, it all sounds very applicable to or, all four tasks, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll have to think more about it, but I, I highly encourage you to um, send me the, the recording of this video. I'll upload okay. it to our YouTube yep. and I'll ping all of the, the four teams. And yeah, let's see if this resonates and if anyone has uh, enough patience to reach this uh, stage of, of this video. Right, fair enough. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I, I think I should just be clear here. So what I'm focused on is basically like molecular mechanisms of uh, host response to viral infection, right? Because mm -hmm. it really depends, how sick you get really depends on how your immune system responds, especially the innate immune response, because you have to wait, you have to wait a couple of weeks before your, um, for your uh, adaptive immune response to, to kick in. So you can get really sick before that ever happens, right? Mm-hmm. So looking for antivirals to kind of boost your immune system and, 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 uh, and you know, start that process as quickly as possible. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so that's the kind of level that I'm looking at. But of course, a bio NLP framework that extracts causal assertions could be useful at, at any scale or, or level. Yeah. Right? Very cool. Very um, generically applied and lots of possibilities to, to use that. And I'll, I'll defer to NLP experts to actually suggest a model that would be the best for this. Uh, maybe BioBert or, um, right. you know, different Medbert, variations. Cyber, all those things, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, for training those, we still have to get the computational resources and support from uh, bigger companies. But hopefully that, that happens soon. But yeah, very cool stuff. I, I'm amazed at the level of abstraction that you're working here. It's, it's very cool. And yeah, let's see what happens. I highly encourage you to jump into the vaccines task because yep. that's where like the most, um, you know, relevant stuff is happening. Yeah. Like, even so, though this could be applied to all four tasks, I, I would recommend the ET task. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, that an antivirals, I think it makes even more sense because, I mean, adaptive immunity, so vaccines are, require adaptive immunity. And so that's like a level of complexity that I'm not ready yet to deal with. I figure if I can just focus on the immediate molecular mechanisms, then I can find an antiviral for that. But yes, that's yeah. all part of treatments and, and the vaccines, and that's definitely what yeah. I'm Yeah, and you, to give you more context, the, the reason why tasks are named as they are is just because this is how yeah. they were presented by the, the White House and committee. Yeah. Like it, it's not because we understand, yeah, it's about vaccines, not about you know, antivirals. Like, we have no clue. This is just some structure that, that we're using to collaborate. Fair enough. All right. Sounds good, man. Thank you so Thanks much lot, for your Art. time. Yeah. How do okay. you pronounce your name? Just Arthur? Or? Yeah, Arthur. Okay. Arthur. Okay. Yeah. So, and please send me the either the file or the, the I think the, the file so I can upload it. To so the file is already on Slack. Were you not able to download that? No, the, the video file. Oh, video file. Yes. I'll do that yes. as soon as I get off. I'll, I tried to oh, streamline. Actually, I'll... So uh, actually, I haven't quite figured this out. I, I recorded another Zoom earlier today because I've got a bunch of Northeastern students who are also working on this for their final project for this causal machine learning class I'm teaching. Or not, I'm, sorry, I'm not teaching it. Uh, that's being taught and I'm, I'm, I'm participating in. But um, uh, once I've got it, because it has to do like some kind of conversion, right? Yes. After it's finished converting, I've got it on my desktop. How mm -hmm. do I get it to a place? Like I have like a little file, like right? a folder yeah. that's got the chat text and the mm -hmm. audio and the video. So How do I what, get that to a I... format that's useful to you? Yeah, so what I do, I take that file and upload it to YouTube because of 2x uh, speed and it's very useful for people to catch up very quickly. Makes so sense. you can just upload the, the file to Google Drive or Dropbox or any other place and send me the link. I'll okay. download it and upload to YouTube. Oh, I could add you to the Google Drive. That's a really good idea. Um, what's your Gmail address? Uh, let me send you. That might be the simplest thing. Just stick it on a Google Drive. There you go. All right. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. I, I have enough information to process. And uh, what's your general um, like availability? Are you? So uh, you know, I have basically been trying to. I've got like, uh, so I, I have a PI for like four different projects right now, but I've basically managed to, uh, um, three of my projects are in good hands. And so I just need to focus on this one. Okay. Sounds good. That sounds like you, you will be a, a lot of help uh, across different things. Cool. At least it, it sounds like that to me. All right. Sounds good, man. Um, right. I'll let you know if I have some, some other ideas. Sounds good. All right. Bye.